Hello, good evening everybody. Welcome to my humble home. Welcome to Self Down Leisure live streaming. We've just put on some extra classes now, I've extended the timetable, so I'm able to come and live stream for you. This is my first time, so it's your first time live streaming. Welcome, join me on my very first inaugural launch. Okay, so my name is Ruby, and I'm gonna share a 45 minutes Pilates practice with you tonight. It's for all levels, it's an all round kind of practice practice. And if you're new for the first time, don't have any anxieties, I will give you options. But of course, most importantly, if you need to have a break, please do. If there's any pain or strain in any of the movements you need to, just take it back a little bit. As I said, I'll give you the options. So you just need to be mindful and responsible for your own bodies, looking after yourself and keeping yourself safe. Okay, so what is Pilates? If you're here with me, we're not quite starting yet. Just to explain to most people what Pilates is, it's a system of whole body movements, basically. So it's not movement per se, so we're getting mobility, flexibility, but it's more than that. It's mindful control of all our movements. So there's a lot of mind and body connection. We work with precision, so all our movements are very precise, they're very thoughtful, and you'll certainly get a lot more body awareness once you start to do Pilates a little bit more regularly. So you'll improve your score stability, your core strength, really get good posture, good posture alignment, and your breathing will be a lot better. It's all about also spinal articulation. So Joseph Pilates says, a very healthy spine is a spine that moves throughout all its segments. So if slightly locked in one place or another, this will help to let you freely flow with your body. Okay, so I'm really happy that you're here. Just a few uh, things before we start. Just check, we're gonna have a mat only, a mat and maybe a towel. So I've just grabbed a hand towel. If you want to grab a hand towel, and you can just fold it up. There's no equipment needed today because obviously we're not in the gym. So you can hold it, have a hand towel and just kind of roll it up, maybe for your head, for the hips, whatever you may need. So I'm just gonna put it to the side for now. So just grab that. And if you need to have a drink at any time, make sure you've got a water bottle close to you. Take a few little sips if you need to. Obviously, if you just joined me, from Sam's Hot Sweaty Combat class, you're gonna to need to make sure you're hydrated. So welcome to all of you who've come in from that as well. So we can get started. And just checking that you're gonna to work to all your fitness levels. Make sure you've got any injuries or anything, you're gonna just take it back a few levels. Anything that's painful, please stop. Think about your bodies, keep yourself safe. All right, and we can get started. So I'm just gonna find my music and put on some nice relaxing music for you. Just to get you into the mood. I'm going to start off with a warm-up. Hopefully you can hear that. So let's get started. Let's think about a very quick posture and alignment check, which is I always like to start the class. So we're going to stand with our feet hip distance apart, feet facing forwards and parallel as best as possible, and just soften the knees a little bit. So we want the natural curves of your spine, the crown of the head reaching up. So natural curve behind your neck, your upper back, and your lower spine. So we're gonna have our feet, hips, knees, ankles, toes, all in line with your shoulders. So think about long train tracks, parallel lines. We're coming to that alignment, softening the knees. Shoulders are backing down, so feel your shoulder blades sliding down either side of your spine, down towards your waist. Crown your head is reaching up as if you've got a piece of string attached to your head, pulling up towards the ceiling, but the chin stays parallel. Make sure you're not tucking your head back. Just keep your chin parallel. Collarbones nice and wide at the front as they equally wide at the back. And start to take a few breaths and start to calm our minds especially if you come in from work or you may be at home working crouched over a computer all day or writing or sitting down all day let's find our alignment so pressing down through both feet equally make sure the weight's equally weighted you're not over to one side or the other pressing through your toes of all your feet and your heels four corners touching the floor with your feet check you're not rolling your feet inwards or roll your feet outwards Slightly draw the belly button towards your spine, just to support your lower back and stabilize the pelvis. Let's start to breathe. Breathing in through the nose. As we breathe in, think about lateral breathing, breathing out into the sides of your ribs as you inhale. And as you exhale, blow through the mouth. Feel your rib cage closing, your waist coming towards the midline of your spine. Deep breath, inhale. Lateral breathing like a pair of bellows. I'm just using my hands to help you illustrate your lungs as you breathe into those ribs and exhale, full mouth, full breath out. One more time, deep breath, inhale. 
So we're thinking about our minds and bodies now. Find that deep connection. Exhale fully through the mouth till there's no air left. Okay, you're going to gently nod the chin towards the chest. As we nod the chin towards the chest, we're going to feel the back of your neck lengthening. Maybe you can look down towards your toes. Then gently bring your eye gaze up again. Just going to warm up the neck. Chin down towards the chest. Release in the back of the neck. And just checking as you do that, when you're rolling the chin down towards your chest, your shoulders aren't coming forward with you and you're hunching your upper back. Keep your collarbones pressing wide, nice and wide. One more time, nodding chin down towards the chest and bringing the head up. And gently just turn your head from side to side, from right to left, nice and easy. Hopefully no clicking, no crunching, just releasing through. And then eye gaze comes forward and just lift the shoulders up towards the ears, breathing in to lift and exhale for the shoulder blades sliding down either side of your spine. Just lifting and lowering, so we're elevating the shoulder girdle, depressing the shoulder girdle. Just to think about the rotation, so roll the shoulders back. Should feel nice if you've been tense all day long, get a lot of tension between our neck and shoulders. If you feel, you can bring in the arms, lifting the elbows. Whatever feels good for you, you've got shoulder problems, any impingement in your shoulders, make sure there's no clicking, no clunking. Just take it to your range of movement. If you want to lift higher, lift higher, find that movement. Big breath, inhale, full breath, exhale. We're going to reverse. You may want to start small to start with, see how that feels. Take it a little bit bigger. So this is only a 45 minute class. So it'll get you warmed up pretty quickly. And then release. Shake out the shoulders if you need to. Little pelvic tilting. So we're going to start with some articulation of the spine. So I'm going to turn sideways on so you can see what's happening. So we're going to again stand your feet hips and apart. Soften both knees equally. We're going to tuck the tailbone under. So we're going to do a posterior tilt. You may want to have your piece fingers on the front of your hip and your thumb behind the hip bone. So you want to tilt the pelvis back. As we're posterior tilting, you're going to feel the arch in your lower back flatten out. And then you can tilt the pelvis forward, an anterior tilt, and you can feel the arch deepen in your lower back. So just tilt and pelvis back and forwards, posteriorly and anteriorly. Check that you have got your knees soft. If you tend to have your legs straight, it's very difficult to tilt the pelvis. So soften those knees, it'll loosen up the hips and the pelvis. So there's some movement in the lower back now in the pelvis. So this is a bone movement, okay? You shouldn't be really gripping with anything, just want to release the lower back and the pelvis. And you're just rocking forwards and backwards. Let's go for three more. For two. Always feels awkward to start with when you're a little bit cool. So hopefully that will feel a little bit better now, a little bit easier as you move. And then release. We're going to roll all the way down now. We're going to stand at the edge of our mats. We're going to roll our spines all the way down. So again, stand your feet hip distance apart. Soften your knees. Drop chin down towards your chest for the back of your neck engaging and lengthening. Now you can allow the shoulders to round over because we're going to roll the whole spine over. Allow the arms to release from your body. Check you're not squeezing your arms to your body. Let them go. As this whole body weight is heavy coming over your hip girdle, scoop the belly up towards your spine, support your lower back. As you release down, you're going to release down. Weight more over into your toes and the heels. Let the head hang for the length of the back of your neck. You might feel a little bit tight in the hamstrings, so just soften your knees as much as you need to. Take a deep breath at the bottom as you inhale for your ribcage expanding through the sides. As you exhale, scoop the belly up to your spine, support that lower back before you come all the way back up. So everything's nice and slow to start with. So you're stacking your spine one point at a time, the shoulders back and down. The last thing to come up is your neck and your head. So we go again, soften those knees, draw the belly to your spine. Nod your chin towards your chest, lengthen the back of your neck, let the shoulders round over. Remember, scoop that belly in, weight over the balls of your feet rather than sinking back into your heels, all the way down, as far as you feel comfortable, maybe a little bit further this time, maybe your fingertips touch the floor, maybe not. Deep breath in, out the bottom, shake your head yes and yes, or no and no. Scoop the belly up as you exhale. So it's going to be a little bit heavier as you come up because you're working against gravity. So as you roll yourself back down again, remember that gravity is going to pull you down. So you need to have a controlled descent, using the abdominals to help that lower back. Make sure you're not hunking down from your lower spine, releasing all the way down. And one more time, you're going to rise back up again. Deep breath, inhale, scooping the belly in, unrolling the spine. Feel your spine stacking one vertebrae on top of the other, one bone at a time. Shoulders back and down, feel the slide down the spine. And then you're going to bring your head and neck up. How did we do? 
Spine's a little bit warmer now. We're going to walk ourselves out to some planks. So soft your knees, draw belly to spine, not chin towards our chest. Relax the arms, keep scooping that belly in, weight over the balls of your feet and maybe fingertips touch. If they don't, maybe bend your knees as much as you need to. Can we bring the palms down? Even if you're resting the chest on the thighs, it's okay to bend your knees. And you're going to walk out in four. So four, three, two, one. Shoulders come right over your wrists, press your heels back. So you're going to just check you're not sinking down, pushing the floor away, feel lifted through your upper back. Making sure your lower back hasn't sunk, so you're not arching your lower back. I want the hips low, but in a diagonal line from your ankles to your hips to your shoulders. Crown your head is reaching forward of yourself. We're just going to hold here for 10. For 9, if you feel you need to, you can always come down your knees. As long as you've got your knee in line with your hip and your shoulder in a diagonal line. For 5, how are you doing? For keep that belly drawn in, the front of your belly has got that deep connection. For 2, for one, if you're not on your knees already, you're going to tuck your toes under, going to soften your knees as you walk back up, and you're going to roll yourself all the way back up again. So you should feel a little bit more supple now, rolling all the way up, and one more time, you're going to roll down, chin towards your chest, soften your knees, rolling yourself all down, so you get this lovely articulation of the spine, hands down, bend your knees as much as you need to, you're going to walk out again, four, three, two, one, shoulders over wrist. This time we're going to walk back slightly. We're going to lift our hips high so we push the floor away. Make sure you're shifting the hips all the way back and then we're going to press the heels down if we can. If you can't do that, keep on the balls of your feet. That's absolutely fine. We're going to have a little stretch of the spine, the back of the hamstrings. If you feel you can sink your ears between your biceps, your upper arm muscles, see if you can press the chest down towards the thighs. Just hold there for five, four, Take the weight out of the wrist, push the floor away, three, two, one, let's gently pedal the heel, so bend one knee as you bring the opposite heel to the floor, and we're going to switch. So as we do that, check that you're not really rotating through the hips, not going from side to side, really just bend your knees and pressing the heel back, just getting the stretch out and opening up the calves, and keep pressing your chest down towards the thighs, lifting your belly high as you can. Let's go for five more, for five, four, Three, two, one. This time lift both heels up towards the ceiling. Push the floor away. Press back. Pull the chest down. It's a lovely big stretch. And then soften your knees. We come onto all fours. So bring your knees gently down. And come into our four point kneeling. So we're going to have a nice little uh, alteration here. So we have our wrists right underneath our shoulders. So it's a vertical line from your shoulders to your wrists. And also from your hip bone to your knees. Check your hands aren't too far forward, or they're too far back, too close, there's no balance there. So you want this nice stability. So your back is in what we call neutral, you're not super arched or super tucked under. Pushing the floor away, and start to articulate the spine again. So remember we're tucking the tailbone under whilst we're standing. We're going to do the same thing again. Imagine there's a tail between your thighs, you're going to pull that tail underneath towards your navel. So you're going to round off your lower spine. And gently take an eye gaze to your thighs, tucking that chin in, pushing the floor away, really scoop up the abdominals to your spine. So you get a lovely roundness for your upper back and your lower spine. And then we're going to reverse. We we'll send the tailbone up towards the ceiling. So let's go to the lower spine first. Belly button, belly's coming to the floor, ribcage to the floor. Now pull the chest through the shoulder girdle to come into extension. So this is your cow stretch. We go back into cat stretch again, tuck the tailbone under, let's do the lower spine first. Tucking it under, then middle spine, upper spine is rounding in, nodding the chin in, look between the thighs. And if you feel you want to, imagine pressing your shin bones into the floor and you feel a deeper abdominal contraction as you press the floor away, really arching that back into that flexion, coming back into extension. So tailbone up, belly button, belly to ribs cage coming down, pull the chest through the shoulder girdle, eye gaze is just in front of you about a meter. Try not to lift your head up so you're crunching the back of your neck. You can even hear my voice changing. So let's keep the back of the neck nice and long. We go again. So in your own time, cat and cow stretch. So breathe in as you extend and breathe out as you tuck under. So what's happening here is both ends of your spine are coming towards one another as you come into cat stretch. And then both ends of your spine are moving away from one another as you extend. So cat and cow stretch. It feels, should feel lovely and releasing for your back. So don't forget, you know that little song? 
So your pelvis attached to your lumbar spine, lumbar spine attached to your thoracic spine, thoracic spine connected to your cervical spine. So everything is lovely and fluid, nice and easy. So if you don't mind my back to you, I'm going to move the spine a little bit more laterally this time. So stay where you are on figure four. So this time we're coming into our cat stretch. So scooping through the abdominals, nodding the chin in towards your chest, tucking that tailbone under. I'd like you to send your right ribcage out to the right and gently come back over your right heel, over your left heel and bring your ribcage out to the left and back into center. So you want to make sure you want to soften your elbows, bend your elbows as much as you need to, you're scooping in and up. So it's kind of like a little circle. So you can now imagine my hands underneath your belly, I'm going to let you roll the circle. Remember, as we're doing that, and allow the head to release, so don't hold the head stiff. So it's just nice and relaxed, getting a lovely movement in the spine. Coming back over your heels. Remember, the forearms can come down towards the floor. That feels a little easy for you. Keep breathing. Make sure you're not holding your breath. Make that last one come back to center and release. We're going to do that again. So come back into cat stretch. This time we go in the opposite direction. It may feel strange to start this. So come over your left ribs, pushing out to the side, lateral flexion. Come over your left heel, your right heel, up to your right side, and over back to center. So again, one side may be feeling a little bit easier, another, let the head release, let the neck release. And then some lovely movement for the spine. It should feel very feline, very cat-like. Imagine that cat wrapped around the lower leg as it purrs around you as you come close to the cat. You want to feel that release. Nice and easy. Let's go for three more. Three. How are you doing? Two. Does that feel good? Because you're in the privacy of your own home, you can meow away. So if you go kind of meow, it's lovely. I say that in my classes all the time. I don't mind you laughing at me. And then coming back to centre. And then just releasing. Now, just walk your hands in, come onto your buttocks and just release your wrists. I know for many of you, you may feel a need of releasing the wrists. Just give them a little stretch. Are we okay? And we're going to keep the spine moving again. So we're coming onto our sit bones. I'm going to turn this way to you. We're going to have our knees bent, feet the hip distance apart. Okay, so try and keep the feet on the floor. Make sure you're on your sit bones. So you need to peel your butt cheeks back, peel them back. Make sure you're not slumping on your lower back. You're not sitting on the base of your pelvis. Okay, so on your sit bones. This shows the back and down. We're going to take a little rotation now, or a little curl of your lower back. So we're still working on the spine, getting some articulation there in different positions. So arms can come forward, or if you feel need more support, you're going to bring them to the back of your thighs. We take a deep breath in, we're going to lengthen up. So I'm going to roll the shoulders back down, make sure you're not folded forwards and slumping. Deep breath in, how heart center is lifting up towards the sky, crown is reaching up to the sky. You want to feel that tailbone tucking under again as you roll back. You're only going to go back to the back of the hips. Make sure you're not bringing your lower spine down. You want to maintain that control. Again, it's rocking that pelvis back and then rocking that pelvis forward again. Okay, so we go again. Deep breath. Inhale. Shoulders relax. Tuck the tailbone under. So imagine scooping that tailbone up towards your belly button. And you feel a deep abdominal contraction there. You should feel the front of your belly kind of tightening as you contract to hold you there. And you use the abdominals to bring you back up. Imagine there's a wheel on your hips and you're just reeling yourself back up again. So deep breath, inhale. How are we doing? If you want to have the hands forward, it feels better for you. So reach forward as you roll yourself back. Almost like you're C-shaping your spine. Make sure again you're not going to the lower back unless you have good abdominal strength. So rolling back. Then nodding the chin if that helps you. And rolling back forwards again. Deep breath, inhale. Exhale. Now you want to make sure that the thighs are relaxed. If your feet start to lift because you're struggling, you're probably going to muscle up on your thigh muscles rather than your abdominals contracting. So make sure we disassociate the thigh muscles, the front of the thighs, when we're doing this movement. And we're going to really think about the abs. So drawing the belly down, deep, 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 deep. Imagine my hand pressing into your belly. Almost like you want to press your lower spine to the floor, but it's not going to touch. Deep breath. Inhale. 
take a breath there if you need to exhale draw the belly in and you're gonna roll all the way back up how are we doing can we do three more deep breath inhale exhale tuck the tailbone under really thinking about shortening your ribs towards your hips so you know feel that you can hold it there there is tension okay so we're holding ourselves there for five four three two one roll ourselves up maybe you're shaking a little bit but you feel those muscles in the front of your belly working rather than your legs so again two more deep breath inhale exhale tuck that tailbone under roll through that low the, the sorry the pelvis holding it there for five now your shoulders squeezing up can you relax the shoulders down two one now this you feel is all that you can manage you can stay with this okay you want to start to think about the pelvis rotating back lower spine is kind of curling yes getting that lovely roundedness of lower spine without it touching waking up so if you want to stay with that you can do if you want to progress you feel comfortable with it the legs aren't lifting you're not feeling anything in the front of your thighs we're going to add some load this time deep breath inhale so we're going to use our body weight exhale belly to spine roll yourself back this time your arm i'm going to use my front arm so you're going to reach the arm up and i'm going to bring the arm down and then the other arm comes up and the arm comes down and you're going to roll forward again squeezing the belly to your spine and rolling up so deep breath inhale reset the shoulders if you need to check that you're on your sit bones deep breath inhale exhale draw the belly in scoop and hold out the abdominals when you reach just to the base of that pelvis you're going to reach one arm up if you feel you can get your bicep by the ear and still hold that lovely c shape without collapsing do so and exhale down the other side, deep breath in, inhale. So we're not rotating, just lifting the arm up and down. How do you do? And roll yourself up. Should be feeling a little bit now. Belly should be warming up. Deep breath in, inhale. Exhale, we'll just go for one more. Rolling all the way down. Just above the lower spine. Lifting up, breathing in. And breathing out. How are we doing? Lift. And lower. And rolling yourself up. If you feel you need to have a break, reaching up, a little bit of extension, and just bring the chest down to the thighs. Just release the lower back. Release the hips and shoulders. No tension there. And can we add a little bit of rotation now? Yes, deep breath in. Shall we give it a try? Again, if you don't want to uh, feel that you could do this, maybe you can just keep practicing rolling back and rolling forwards. Okay, if you, especially if you're new, we take a deep breath, inhale to lift, exhale, roll yourself back. This time both arms will be parallel, you're going to rotate them to the front. Just past the knee and the thigh, rotate back to centre, keeping your upper body staying in that lifted position, you're going to rotate to the other side. So think about your rib cage rotating rather than your arms and your shoulders coming over. So it's rib cage, rib cage, rib cage, the arms are just hanging on your shoulder girl, yes? And come back to centre and roll all the way up. I did an extra one there, deep breath, inhale, exhale, curl yourself back, scoop the abdominals. Now we're working the oblique muscles, the side waist muscles as we rotate. How are we doing? Try and keep the shoulders parallel rather than squashing one to the other. So the shoulders are relaxed as you rotate. Think about the ribcage turning. So you're really spinning your ribcage on the axis of your spine, coming back to centre, breathing in. Exhale, let's rotate. Don't forget to breathe. And breathing in as you come back to centre and roll yourself back up. Shall we do two more? Deep breath, inhale, exhale. Let's curl ourselves back. Let's rotate. Think about the rib case spinning on the axis of your spine. If you feel you can hold it there for five, four, three. Can you feel the oblique muscles working now to hold you there? Two, hopefully those thighs are relaxed. One, come back to centre. Can we go to the other side? Deep breath, inhale again. Exhale, let's rotate. It may be a small rotation, so absolutely fine. But feel the squeeze like you're wringing out a wet rag with a waist. We're going to hold here for five, four, three, two, one. Coming back to centre, drawing the belly in. I'm going to roll all the way up. Onto your sit bones, reaching the arms up, shoulders relaxed. And just bring your chest down to your thighs, relaxing the neck. Nice deep breath in. Beautiful. We're going to continue to load the belly. So we're going to roll ourselves down. So come all the way down. Find a way down. You can maybe hug your knees towards your thighs. And just bring 
let the lower spine release for a little while. Let your spine kind of adjust to this position. Just gently hug the knees, rock a little bit if you want to. Nice deep breaths. Now your collarbones nice and wide and open. Shoulder blades are heavy into the mat. So bring your feet down one by one. And continue to work the core. This time we're gonna bring the upper body upwards. So we're gonna curl the other way. Before we're curling from the base of our spine to the top of our spine, now we're coming from the top of our spine this way. So let's have our feet hip distance apart, feet flat on the floor. So if we recall, ankle, knees and hips in line with your shoulders. Think about those parallel lines. Arms down by your side. Feel the shoulder blades sliding down towards the waist. And just give yourself time to relax. If your head, if you're tilting your head back and you're looking at the back wall, you're crunching the back of your neck, then I suggest you find that towel and just place it underneath your head so that now your neck is in line with your spine. Okay, so always good alignment. But we're going to start here. So take a deep breath, inhale, exhale. Let's take that pelvis rocket forwards and backwards. So we did that standing, we did that on all fours. I'm just going to do that lying down. So you may want to have your index finger and middle finger to the front of your hips your thumb to the back of your hips. Now roll the pelvis back. So imagine rolling the pelvis back and then this time, because you're on the floor, you'll feel your lower spine pressing into the mat. They call that imprinting. And then you're going to release. So roll the pelvis back, just doing a posterior tilt at the moment and then release. So you're definitely feeling your tailbone pulling up towards your navel as you roll back and then releasing. So rolling back, feel the imprint, lower back pressing into the floor and release. One more time. Gonna press and hold it there for that lower back sprinting into the floor for five, four, really drawing the belly down towards the spine, two, one, and slowly release. We're going the opposite direction this time. So imagine the tailbone going down between the knees or the feet and the hip bones going up towards the ceiling. So you're gonna deepen that arch in your lower spine and then release back. So this time we're rocking the pelvis forwards, an anterior tilt, or you may feel it's going up towards the ceiling because we're lying down. Deeper arching the lower back, and then release. One more time, we're gonna bring the tailbone down between the thighs towards the feet, hip bones going up towards the ceiling, and then release. So we have those two extremes of movements. So you may wanna just roll back and roll forwards. Just releasing the lower back again. So we're getting a lot of articulation today. Just breathing in, breathing out, keep breathing, and then releasing. So we come to our upper body now. We're gonna come into a curl up. So working the lower abdominals and our six pack muscles. So if this feels good for you, you're gonna have our hands behind the head. If you're not used to this, you may feel a little strain in your neck. So my advice is you, as we come up, you're gonna tuck that chin towards your chest. You're gonna give yourself a double chin. Imagine you're gripping a little peach or apple between your chin and your chest. So elbows are wide, hands behind your back uh, head, maybe interlock fingers so that the hand causes like a little hammock for the head. Elbows in peripheral vision. So make sure you're not squeezing your elbows up towards your ears. You just relax. Front of your chest, collarbones wide and open. Then take a deep breath, inhale. As you exhale, gently draw the belly down towards your spine. Then nod your chin in towards your chest as you float up head, neck and chest. So. Check that you're not hanging back here. It's a heavy head. Even though you've got your hands to support you, you really tuck that chin in. So you're looking down between your thighs. And then you're gonna roll yourself back down again through the spine. Deep breath, inhale. Exhale, draw the belly in. Nod chin towards your chest. Float up your head, neck and chest. Can we lift off our shoulder blades a little bit more? So remember that tightening of the ribs towards the hips. It's the same thing. It's like a concertina in your body, squeezing your ribs to hips. It's kind of like a horizontal move. And then you're gonna roll yourself down. How are you feeling? Starting to activate. Deep breath, inhale. Exhale, draw belly down towards your spine. Nod chin towards your chest. Lengthen the back of your neck. Float up your head, neck and chest. And maybe you can come off your shoulder blades. And then release. So two more of these. Breathing in. Breathing out, draw belly to spine. Nod chin towards your chest. Float up your head, neck and chest. Looking between the thighs, maybe you might start to be shaking if you're not used to this, and then releasing down. And another two times, let's say two times. By the way, if you're used to coming to my classes, I have no idea about counting. I cannot count to save my life. So if I say six, make sure it is six. I tend to go do ten, and I'm still on number four, five, six, 
So we're just gonna lower down through the spine, and again, deep breath, inhale, relax the shoulders, remember, elbows wide if you take an in-breath, as you exhale, elbows back in for a ripple vision, chin tucks towards your chest, front up your head and chest. And this time, if you can, off your shoulder blades, maybe your hands can reach the back of your thighs. Maybe your fingers can pull you up just slightly. So you wanna feel that real squeeze from your ribs to your hips. The hands are there just to support you. Making sure you're not pulling the feet off the floor, keeping the lower spine, the back of your hips on the floor, lifting up a little bit more, and then gently roll back down. Head comes back behind your head. Deep breath, inhale. Exhale, chin towards your chest, belly down towards your spine, float up your head, thick and chest, shoulder blades off. Maybe reach the back of your thighs. Can we pull ourselves up a little bit higher? Hold it there, and then we're gonna roll ourselves down. You having the hands behind the thighs is still okay to help you lower down with control. Hands come back over your head. Deep breath in, can we progress or we can stay doing this? Inhale, exhale, draw the belly down towards your spine, nod chin towards your chest. Float up your head, neck and chest, off your shoulder blades, reaching the back of your thighs. Now, as we pull up a little bit, okay, you're gonna feel that contraction, rib to hips. If you feel you can, without letting this drop, hold it there and maybe release the hands. There we go. For five, four, three, two, one. Hands come back if you need to. Boy, oh boy, I know I'm out of condition. These last three months haven't been doing as much as I should do. I'm paying it for it now. So deep breath, inhale. How are you doing, guys? Are you okay? Take a break when you need to. Don't do as many reps if you don't want to. Just make sure you're doing it in good form and you're activating the correct muscles, keeping your body in good alignment, keeping yourself nice and safe for the lower back and pelvis. Deep breath, inhale. Exhale, nod chin towards your chest. Float up your head, neck and chest. Looking between your thighs. If this is all you can manage, you can manage that, that's fine. Maybe you want to just bring one hand there, one hand back. Other hand to your thigh, other hand back, or maybe, as we did before, pull up a little bit more. Hold it there if you can. Release without slumping. Squeeze, come contract, contract, contract. For five, four, keep that chin tucked in. Make sure you're not hanging back here, it's a heavy head. Four, three, two, one. Hands back if you need to, otherwise lower yourself down. We're coming back for one more. Deep breath, inhale. Lower abs should be working now. Exhale. You're working that six-pack muscle as well. Deep breath, inhale. Exhale. Every time we come into flexion, keeping your chin tucked in, we're using our six-pack muscle, yes? That's the six-pack muscle. When we hold it here, we hold this position, it's our deep abdominal muscles, transverse abdominus, that's what, helps our, that's what I call our TA muscle. So we're really firmed in that wraparound muscle for the lower back, if you want to. Hands away for five, four, three, two, Stick with it, one, hands back and back, a little squeeze up again, hold it there, and then we're gonna slowly release all the way down. How did we do? Should we hug in one knee towards the chest? Should we hug in the other knee towards the chest? Just ease and rock back, releasing. Just relax the shoulders, have yourself a break. We're gonna bring the feet back to the floor again. We'll come back up into a bridge. So now we're going to roll from the lower spine again, all the way up to the base of our um, shoulder blades. So we have our feet hip distance apart, arms down by our side, we're coming up into a bridge. So take a deep breath in the house. There's a lot of rotation and articulation for the pelvis today. So tailbone tucks under, so roll the pelvis up, sorry, roll the pelvis up. So feel the lower spine imprinting. And then you're going to release. So just remember that pelvic tilt. Pubic bone comes uppermost. Back of the hips come towards the floor, lower spine closer to the floor, and then release. So we're gonna come up into bridge. So you're gonna release the spine as we peel the spine off the floor. So I'm gonna towel one under for the rotation of the pelvic bone. And start to push down for your feet. Gonna squeeze the butt cheeks to help push those hips up, but you're peeling your spine off the floor one by a time. So the hips are lifted, the lower spine is lifted, your middle spine coming up to your shoulder blades. And we're gonna press and squeeze the buttocks up. Now, you should have a nice diagonal line from your shoulders to your hips to your knees. If your butt is hanging down here, because you're not squeezing hard enough, you're hanging on your lower back. It's not a good place to be. So make sure those butt muscles will be working to squeeze those hips up. When you're at the top, make sure you're not squatching into your chest. The chest is not flaring, sorry, the chest is not squashing into the chin. Your ribcage is not flaring. And what's happening with your legs? Have your legs come out to the side, 
Check the hip bones are nice and level from side to side and the rib is closed. So want the rib cage closed and not flaring open. So close the rib cage, that lovely diagonal line, and then slowly roll down through your spine. So imagine my hand on your chest, concave in your chest, coming down from your middle back, towards your middle back, sorry, from your lower shoulder base to your middle back, all the way down, controlling the release. So you're laying your spine down one bone at a time. Back of the pelvis, the bum, and then the tailbone. It's a long way down and up, isn't it? So deep breath, inhale, shall we try again? Exhale, draw belly to the spine, rotate the pelvis back. So tailbone is really coming up towards the navel, peeling the back of the hips up, so I might move my hand, peeling the back of the pelvis off, the lower spine, one bone at a time, pressing down your feet. You may even use the back of your arms to help you up. Squeeze those butt cheeks, you really wanna work those glute muscles coming all the way up. Strong glute muscles will support the lower back and the pelvis. And then you'll slowly roll yourself down. Try and delay the pelvis as much as possible. Make sure the pelvis not come down and then the lower back is gonna arch. Okay, so all the way up, I'm gonna roll all the way down. So laying that spine down one bone at a time. Back of your hips, the bum and the tailbone releases. We're gonna go up again one more time. Deep breath, inhale. Exhale, draw the belly down, rotate the pelvis. The hips lifting off, your lower spine, peeling off the spine one bone at a time all the way up. Pressing through, squeezing the butt cheeks. You may feel the back of the thighs activating. Hopefully it's not too much in your, your hamstrings. They don't need to activate too much. Thinking about those butt cheeks, squeeze and keep it up, hold it there. So we're gonna think about work, doing some work in the glutes. So the two hip bones should be level. Make sure you're not rotating to one side, you're not dropped to one side and your butt hasn't hung down. So pressing down, remember you can use the back of your arms to help you. Check you've got that lovely diagonal line from your shoulders to hips to knees. Think about lifting your thighs over your knees, over your toes. It might just help lift your hips up a little bit more. Are we still pressing down equally through the feet? Are we feeling a deep squeeze in those butt cheeks? They should be almost clenching by now. And can you manage to smile without gritting your teeth? Because your whole upper body should be relaxed, holding it there. I'm gonna lift one heel. So I'm gonna lift my front heel up while my other heel stays. So I'm gonna lift the front heel and bring the heel down. Now we're gonna do an alternate heel list. As we're doing that, I'm just gonna exaggerate. We're not swinging the hips from side to side as we lift one heel. Okay, what we're actually doing, as we lift one heel, the opposite butt cheek is squeezing hard to maintain that level hips. So make sure you're not dipping down, you haven't dropped, bring the heel down. Before you lift the other heel, the opposite butt cheek squeezes, then you can lift that left hip, the other heel safely without the hips rocking from side to side. Heel comes down. Let's lift one heel and down. How are we doing? Let's lift one heel and down. If that feels right for you, do you need to adjust the feet a little bit? Squeeze those butt cheeks. Let's lift and lower. Let's lift and lower. Let's lift and lower. Those butt cheeks should be burning now. Let's lift and lower. Lift and lower. Now this time, both heels are going to lift. So most probably, the hips will rise up just a little bit. Keep that belly drawn to your spine. Those butt cheeks are still squeezing. And then gently bring the heels down with control. Don't let them just drop down. Slowly with control, keeping the hips nice and level. Then gently roll yourself down through the spine, all the way down, one bone at a time. Gently hug in one knee towards your chest. You should see, feel your spine flattening out. Draw that knee up towards the sort of shoulder. If you feel like you want the other leg to extend long, you can extend long, get a nice hip flexor stretch on that bottom leg. You can like top knee towards your shoulder. You can rotate your ankle one way or the other. How are you all feeling? Your butt cheek's still burning. We're gonna have a little stretch of the glutes in a while. And then bring your foot to the floor and hug in the other knee now. So gently hug in the knee. Try not to compress the knee. Maybe hold on to the shin. If you can't reach the shin, maybe the back of your thighs, you draw that knee up towards your shoulder. Make sure you're not, not rotated in any way and extend your other leg long. So lovely hip flex stretch from that front leg, the bottom leg, drawing that knee up towards your shoulder. As you do that, make sure your shoulders aren't squashing up towards your ears. We still want to keep good alignment, good posture for your shoulders. Bring the shoulder blades down towards the waist. Again, rotate the ankle one way or the other. How are we all doing, guys? Are you still with me? Yeah? Okay. And then bring your foot down and then come in a little stretch of the glutes. So your front leg nearest to me, gonna lift it up, we'll cross your ankle over the thigh, and use the same side of your hand to press out in the thigh, just to open up the hip. Let's have a little stretch here. And then come onto tippy toe, the bottom leg, 
Come sit down, drawing the thigh closer to your chest, hands behind your thighs. You're just going to lift up and gently ease the thigh towards your chest. And you use a forearm to press out on the inner thigh of the crossed leg. So you're going to feel the stretch on the outer hip, on the glute. Just nice and easy, drawing in. I'm going to hold for at least 20 to 30 seconds. As the stretch eases off, you're going to ease the leg in a little bit further. And if you want to just ease off a little bit. So each time you're doing this, this is called PNF stretches. Proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, I believe. This helps you stretch a little bit further each time, just pulling it in and then gently releasing. We're going to do that one more time. Then draw the thigh towards your chest, press the form out onto the inner thigh, the other leg, or the top leg. Nice and easy. Check your shoulders relax. Always a, always a propensity to squeeze your shoulders up towards your ears. So just nice and easy. Nice, slow, deep breaths. Then just bring the foot back to the floor. Unhook to the other side. Crossing over, just ease out the hips. So maybe just pressing up on the inner thigh. Try not to push the knee away, just inner thigh. Just take a few breaths. Before you come to tippy toe, draw the thigh in, lifting up. Draw the thigh towards your chest. Pushing the forearm out to the inner thigh. Just breathe. It feels quite tight to start with. You'll definitely feel a stretch here. If not, PNF stretches. Draw the thigh towards you. You're going to hold that contraction, pressing out on the inner thigh. Keep breathing. So every stretch, you need to stretch for about 20 to 30 seconds. And then your brain will kind of just relax, thinking you're safe now, you're not doing anything dangerous. We tend to stretch very quickly and it's go from 0 to zero, uh, 0 to 10. Your body will find yourself going into protection mode and just go straight into contraction, which is obviously the, the opposite to releasing and stretching. So draw the thigh in, push the forearm out into the inner thigh. You feel a steep stretch this side on the glute and the outer hip. It's a lovely stretch. And then we're going to gently release foot to the floor. Let's have a full body stretch, fingertips to toes. Stretch it all out. Watch what you're touching. Nice stretch. And you can allow your ribcage to flare out if you want to. Lower back, just have a little stretch. And then we can have what we call banana stretch. You can take your left leg out to the side, just maybe to the outside corner of your mat and take your right leg to your left leg. So you're gonna find a stretch on your right side. Left hand comes down a little bit and you take your right arm over. So make sure you're not lifting your shoulder blade off the floor, keeping both shoulder blades on the floor. Use your index finger and thumb of your left hand, just clasp your right wrist and just ease over. So you've got this lovely banana shape. You should feel a stretch all the way down your right side. Breathing in. You're gonna feel a rib cage lifting away from the hip. If you want a little more, you're gonna just pull it over for the shoulder a little bit more. And if you want to cross your right ankle over your left ankle, again, if that's too much for you, just unhook your leg. It's that beautiful stretch. And hold for five, four, three, two, one. Release the wrist. Come back to the center of your upper body. Release your right leg off the left ankle. Come back to the center. Now, if you happen to bring your feet together, you will feel that your right leg is slightly longer than your left leg. So, we're going to do the other side. Take your right leg out to the side, left leg over to the right leg. Just enjoy that stretch first of all. It will feel strange. So this is kind of like a lateral flexion on the floor. When you got used to that, right arm out to the side, left arm follows. So just feel that lovely banana stretch first of all. Breathe deep into it, feel that beautiful stretch lifting your ribs away from your hips. It's just a nice stretch. Fully supported your spine on the floor, so that feels nice. If you want more, index finger and thumb of your left hand, passing around your right wrist, and you're gonna use it just to ease over. Oh, sorry, the other way around. Right hand, finger and thumb, easing the left shoulder over a little bit more, so you can find that deeper stretch. If you want a bit more, left ankle over right ankle. Again, it's not for everybody, if that doesn't feel good for you today or tonight, just release and just breathe that stretch. Again, check your shoulder hasn't lifted off the floor. Keep both the shoulder blades on the floor. Back of your hips on the floor, not rotated through the hips. Beautiful stretch. And then gently release your wrist 
upper body comes back to center, release the right arm, left leg uncrosses, bring it back to center, right leg to center. And just by magic, hopefully now your feet feel their level. If not, you have to see the doctor tomorrow. So, okay, let's roll ourselves up. So nice and gently, hug your knees in towards your chest. Let's give it a little nice. And then we're gonna roll ourselves up, or you may want to come to your sides and come all the way up. How did we feel? Let's now have a little uh, side lunge again. So just releasing again, make sure it's not tight. I'm going to bring one shin bone across the front of your mat, sitting into 90-90. The back knee comes to the front foot. Hands onto the shin. Deep breath. Inhale. Let's take a nice stretch again. So still lateral flexion. Deep breath. Inhale and hand over. Maybe stretch here. Soften the elbow. Come over for a stretch. So you may take this at your own pace. You may want to go faster, slower. See how that feels for you. Or you may want to just hang there. I'm going to is. Just check you're still scooping the belly to the spine. But stretch and support the lower back. Nice and easy. And then we're gonna change sides. So bring the legs round, switch them over. Holding onto the shin. So on your sit bone, you're probably on one sit bone more than the other, but that's absolutely fine. Take a deep breath, inhale. Over the side of your, your shin. Get that lovely stretch again. Should be quite warm now, we do those banana stretches. Up and over. So in your own pace, nice and easy. How are you all feeling, everyone? Hopefully you're feeling better from when you uh, came to the class. So that you've had a small workout for your abs. Learn a little bit about your body, some body awareness. And then come back to center. Let's bring both feet forward. Let's bend up one knee, let's have a little rotation. So you may want to hug the thigh towards your chest. Or you may want to just have one hand behind your spine, lengthen your spine, sitting tall, and then you're just going to rotate to that front thigh. If those of you want more, you're going to have your foot on the other side of your knee, gently hug that thigh in, lengthen up, and rotate. So you're going to turn that chest towards that front thigh. Make sure you're not hunching, you're not collapsed. Keep the length through the crown of your head, keeping the chest and the heart center, lifting up towards the ceiling. Little rotation and come back to center. Let's switch sides. So foot inside of the knee, on your sit bones, lift up, hand behind your back just to give you some stability and either hug the knee in or foot over the other side of the knee, deep breath, inhale, lengthen up, exhale, rotate. And see how far around you can turn on your out breath. And then gently coming back to center and cross your legs, Give yourself a little shake out. Hopefully you enjoyed that. There's always feedback you can give me. I'm always welcome for feedback. Tell me what you liked. Hopefully you'll join me again next week. Every time it's always very different. And also I'm doing body bands on Friday night, 6.15 here at live streaming. So if you enjoyed it, thank you very much for joining me. Let's bring our hands to our heart center. A little nod of the chin down towards the eyes to the floor, out of appreciation and respect for one another, namaste, gently bring your eye gaze back up, from my home to your home, from my heart to your heart, thank you for joining me tonight, good night.